So think about this with me for just a moment. This is the Shabbat where we read that all the Israelites stood together at the foot of Mount Sinai and heard the Ten Commandments. And the funny thing about it is that if it was a world where no one ever murdered or took God's name in vain or everyone honored their parents, we wouldn't even need those commandments. We have them because we need them, because we're human beings. And I think about that in a little bit in relationship to Jewish Disability Awareness and Inclusion Month. If we were aware and inclusive all the time and truly, truly, we would not need to have a Shabbat like this, but we need it. And again, I want to say a special word of gratitude to the Busina family for bringing some of this awareness to us and for, for helping us, encouraging us to, uh, to think about it together. And we're so grateful not only that the whole Busina family is here, but that um, Wendy from this organization to support families with children with disabilities is here. And you'll see after services tonight, not only the delicious food that they brought but also and provided, but also um, a table with very important information on it. And even if you think, well, I, I, don't, I don't think I, I don't know if I have a disability. I don't think I know someone in my family. I think it's worth all of us getting that information and, um, and, and learning and talking with the Businas and talking with Wendy. Wendy, can you stand up for a minute so everyone can, can find you after services? We're really grateful that you're here with us tonight. Uh, as I said, this is something that, that we need because we're human beings and we're not perfect. And I want to share uh, a hard story for me to share about when I was a child and I was an extremely shy and sheltered child and I went to my very first day of middle school, which I believe was called junior high in that time, and um, I was sitting there by myself at lunchtime and a really friendly girl walked up and wanted to connect with me and she was profoundly hard of hearing. She was deaf. And I was just, I didn't understand her. She was trying to talk to me. I couldn't understand what she was saying. And I just, I got up and I moved away because I was so uncomfortable and I didn't know what to do. And I don't know how many of us here have had any kind of an experience like that where we look back on it and we feel like we were not our very best self in that moment. And yet that's what we're always striving to be is our very best selves. So I think that is, again, part of the reason why we come here and we think and we talk and we learn. And um, it's such a great pleasure. I'm going to invite one of our congregants, Anna Burnick, to come up and have a little conversation with me. And uh, I, Anna, come on up. Come, come sit next to me so we can, we can talk a little bit. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll hear right away why um, we're so thrilled to have Anna with us tonight. But I told Anna that uh, I'm, I'm scrolling on Facebook all the time, as you know, no young people do anymore, but my generation does this. And she had written the most, you'd written the most beautiful thing that I read about, you know, some of the achievements in your life and about coming to terms with autism and just realizing this is part of who you are. And I was just so, um, so deeply, deeply moved by that, that I wondered if we could ask you a few questions and everybody could get to know the wonderful, incredible Anna Burnick. Oh, of course, go for it. All right, all right. And her family is here too. I think everybody knows Will who greets us all on Friday nights. So just start by telling us a little bit about your relationship with Emmanuel. Well, it's actually been a relationship that goes even before I was even born. I mean, all four, all three of my siblings and I have been members of the synagogue, including my parents. We've all been mem have been part of been very active in the uh, the Emmanuel Hill community. All four of us were involved in Jewish education. I think all of us probably ever since uh, going all the way back to preschool, all of in bed and. I also went to synagogue class, uh, classes. I was got, I was B'nai Mitzvah here. Still remember the day, Saturday, March 12, two, uh, 2011. 
And I actually, well, I ended up going through like post B'nai Mitzvah classes where I was also confirmed right before my high school graduation. So I definitely have a history there. You definitely have a history there. I think uh, Rabbi Jonathan and I got to be your 10th grade teachers. I don't remember, know if you remember that because it was a long time ago. Of course I do. I was part of the first class. I was part <laughs> of our first New York trip. That's right. That's right. You, was, uh, you were one of the originals there. And uh, I remember what a stellar and superb student you were then. So I wonder with all of those, all this life you've lived at Emmanuel, if anything stands out for you about that that you could share? I guess for me, it was more like in relation to my disability, it's more, I was always treated the same way when it comes to being a member of the synagogue classes. I just, I would always, ha always be part of that. I was always part of the activities. I learned all the prayers. In fact, I, to this day, still can remember the Be'ah Hafta and the Shema off the, to all, all, all way off the top of my head. Excellent. From the heart. Excellent. And I get, oh, but I think what really stood out with me in relation to my disability was how I needed that extra support and like learning Hebrew and learning my prayers. There have been times in my temple class where, uh, where Flora would actually pull me aside to like go over some, re uh, to review some extra stuff, make sure I actually get it know, uh, uh, get to know it. And even uh, it really came down when I was about to get bat mitzvahed where she, uh, I would meet her with her like every Monday evening so that she'll, well, she knows I actually got, uh, that I got it right on the day of. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, when we were talking earlier this week, you mentioned Flora and I think you didn't know that Flora, who works in our, Flora Cooperman, who works in our congregation, uh, one of the th holiest things that she does is we have this deep, profound belief that everyone can have a bar and bat mitzvah who wants to have a bar and bat mitzvah. And it doesn't matter if you can read Hebrew or you can't read Hebrew or you have dyslexia or dysgraphia or ADHD or any other thing. And Flora makes it possible for every student who needs any form of support to have uh, to have a bar bat mitzvah. That is really great. Yeah, yeah, and I think that worked out really well. It you know. did. So I'm wondering if you have encountered a time in your life where getting, you needed to get your needs met with accommodations and that didn't happen because the person who should have been helping you was didn't help you or didn't understand. Sorry, would that be in reference to like within the synagogue? And, you no, know, it could be any, it, it could be, in, if, certainly if that happened at synagogue, we would want to hear about it. Oh, of but course, of course. It could be. Of course, of course. Let me see. Oh, uh, see, a few years ago after, well, I well, went, uh, for my undergrad, I went to the University of California, Berkeley, and I graduated way back in May of 2020. So yes, I am a pandemic graduate. And what a, and one of my first jobs that I actually there, I worked at Starbucks for the second time, and that was like I told my boss that I was disabled, disabled, and that is sort. Of, it wasn't really that I couldn't really get those accommodations met because with uh, being like in Starbucks, that's such a hard job. No one really talks about how hard being in the food service really is. Yeah. And getting the, uh, what I needed was those extra accommodations to like get some extra time to really get things down. But given the circumstances. It wasn't really a uh, really able. Uh, he wasn't able to really give me as much support into really getting it right as I needed to. So it wasn't really more of like I don't think he was trying to be anything malicious. It was just like the situation where workplace accommodations can't be really met. It's just was just an unusual circumstance, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and it's a it's a really great reminder that story that you know, we're gonna, we, we need everybody, right? We need everybody in the, in the people force, in the human force at Starbucks and every place else. And it behooves us to learn how to meet people where they are because you have so much to offer. Oh, that's an interesting one. Behooves us, what does that mean? Yeah, that, that just means it's something that we really ought to do. That's what behooves us mean. Yeah, we really ought to, to do it. Um, so I'm wondering what you wish that people would think about when they come to this temple and they meet people with any kind of a difference at all. What do you, what do you think? What can you tell people? What can you help us with? I think the biggest takeaway I want people to know is that if oh, that these are oh, that even though they are disabled and they are interacting with the religion, oh, the like prayers, the Hebrew, the religion overall, any sort of traditions, just let them know that. Yeah, they're doing. Oh, they're interacting with this differently than a near, an able-bodied neurotypical person is, 
doing, but they still want to be a part of that. You still want, uh, want to respect that because they want to be part of the community. They're reaching out to be part of that community. They want to learn this, learn this stuff. They want to be part of some, well, something bigger than themselves and that they just want to be part of a community that like everyone else, they want to be treated like everyone else and being in the synagogue is just one of those platforms where they can do it. I mean, it was, oh, it's like with me, I just want, oh, I wanted to be a bar, oh, bat mitzvah, but I needed that extra assistance. Temple of Mangua was able to give me that extra assistance, so I was able to get everything down when it comes to the prayers, the, the prayers, the, oh, the traditions, and my overall Torah portion. I think it was Leviticus. Aha, uh -huh. that's a tough one. It's one of the hard ones, unless you're the person who holds up the Torah and then Leviticus is right in the middle and then you're nice and balanced, so, yeah. you know. I'm glad that you remember that. And I think it's, what you just said is the most important reminder that people want to be here. So if, if there are people in our congregation who aren't used to people, I mean, some people with disabilities, they can't sit still and some people can't be silent. And I think if we want people to be here, we have to be extra welcoming and just, you know, aware that people are doing what they can be and that they want to be here. Of course. I, I just love that you said that. I really love that you said that. Thanks. So, you know, I, I think that our whole congregation is enormously proud of you and especially, you know, following you on Facebook and your whole time at Berkeley and that you graduated from Berkeley and you're working and you, I think you have an apartment, right? Oh yeah, I actually live at a house with two other girls who actually are also, one of them graduated from UC Berkeley, the other is graduating from UC Berkeley this spring. So they're like, we're part, oh, we just happen to stay in Berkeley. That's great. I just think you should feel so proud of yourself. So just when you think, what, what lies ahead for you? What do you feel very excited about in your future? Well, right now I'm actually still working. I live in Berkeley and I work in Berkeley over in downtown. I'm an academic coach for this place called College Internship Program that also works with autistic adults and other neurodivergent adults where we help them with any sort of services, like in my case, academics, where I'm not, I'm not a tutor. But I'm like make, assisting them and like make, helping them all with the uh, practices to make sure they're okay with like handling their classes. But we also help them in stuff like life skills with cooking and fitness and wellness, social skills, creative arts been, it seems like a really popular one. And just basically helping them how to adult because they're gonna need, oh, they need extra services and extra help to be able to achieve that. Adulting is hard, even for a neurotypical person. <laughs> No kidding. <laughs> it's really true. It's really true. And I think that there are adults here who have known you and seen you since you were a, a small child and as you were going through school and your bat mitzvah and you've sung at a lot of teen services as well. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. part of the teen-led high holy services from like eighth grade to senior year. Very. That's how I think Marsha was the one who incorporated the poet, uh, more like poetry stuff, and I started doing poetry for the, uh, for the, uh, for the services. And my confirmation, I did a sonnet. Beautiful. That's really beautiful. And I think it just, I think it just reminds all of us that every one of us is on a journey, right? And I think back on our Torah portion and how the Israelite people couldn't go to the disability that they had to being free and in the promised land without taking that that journey. And I think one of the things that uh, is so important from is not just the Ten Commandments themselves, but the way that, that the Torah describes how every single person was together and stood together and heard them. And that we have to remember that. And when we want to exclude or push people out that know that the model is for all of us to be together. And uh, I'm just, we're all so grateful to you for coming and for sharing a little of bit of your story. Will you be around afterwards if people want to chat with you? Yeah, I'll be okay. around here for a little bit if, you, if any of y'all want to know, um, know more about me and about how I was able to, uh, able to learn at UC Berkeley and how, that, uh, uh, how did I have to accommodate my disability in that sort of platform. If you want to know about what it's like to be a pandemic graduate, if you want to know what it's like to be at C uh, about CIP, I'm, a free, oh, I'm free as a bird. I'm an open book. <laughs> I think we could give her a little applause. You know what service is. Can I give you a little hug? You're wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.